So for the past 10 days, I've been in Japan. And let me tell you something, it's been an awesome experience. Or should I say, subarashi. I really hope I'm saying that right. So if Japan is somewhere that you wanna visit or you're wondering if it would be a place that you'd be interested in visiting, I wanna talk about my travel, the culture that I experienced over there, the things that I did, the food. I wanna talk about it all. So let's get into it. So the first thing that I want to talk about is traveling to Japan. And before you even step on the plane, there are some requirements that you need to be aware of. So the first requirement is that you need to get a COVID test. And there's a document that lists the different kinds of tests that you can get that they are willing to accept. Now, what I did and what I would recommend doing is a PCR test. And basically PCR is the way or the method in which they test the sample that they take from you. It is important to do the right test because if you don't, they won't let you get on the plane. The second requirement is that you get this test within 72 hours before boarding. If you get it more than that, they won't let you on the plane. The second thing to be aware of is long flights and long layovers. Just be prepared. It'll take you between 13 to 14 hours, depending on where you're coming from. I flew from Virginia to Chicago and then Chicago to Japan. The flight going was 13 and a half hours. And one thing that saved me is having snacks in my bag. They do feed you, but sometimes because the time zones are weird, there may be a long period where they are not feeding you because it's the time where you're supposed to be asleep, but you're up because you're not on that time zone. So just bring snacks. I also had a long layover on the way back. I had a 13 hour layover in Dallas. It's kind of empty in here. It's like nobody here, which I like, but I'm sure that'll, that'll change in the span of 13 hours. So again, make sure you bring stuff so you have something to do. It's just something that's good to know. So while I was I in Japan, I went with a group called Far Flung on a missions trip, and I basically went to help film. Far Flung is such a great organization to be a part of and to work with, and I wanna talk about that more, so, so please stay tuned for that. Now, I'm sure you can Google Japan culture and learn a lot of things, but I just wanna tell you what I experienced personally, or at least the things that stuck out to me. One thing that I thought was really Really interesting is how clean the country is. I was in Tokyo, Sano, Miyazaki, Hachijojima, and a few other places, and every single place that I went, it was clean. There wasn't trash on the ground, even the toilets were clean, and I'm gonna talk about the toilets too. Even when we went downtown Tokyo, although I did see some, I saw very little, and the interesting part about it is they don't have a lot or really any public trash cans, so you're talking about a place where people can't throw their trash away randomly while they're walking down the street, but yet there's still no trash in the streets. I thought it was something to really admire. I mean, even the toilets at random gas stations on these islands that were like in the middle of almost what seemed like nowhere had very, very clean bathrooms. The people were super cool too. I mean, they would be so friendly and kind and, and respectful. Matter of fact, while I was there, the people who were translating for us, I became close to them and have even been invited to come back. These were super, super cool people. Even talking about it, I legit miss Japan right now. And the food was really good. I, I have to admit that I like having rice with every meal. I didn't know I would like rice that much, but I really did, even breakfast. I remember one time we had to stay in like this bed and breakfast place and they served us breakfast with like rice and fish and eggs and the food was good. The sushi was really good too, but if you are someone who prefers the rolls and you order sushi over there, just know that a lot of the times when they say sushi, they are referring to more so like sashimi type of sushi, which was still really good. I eat both. Two, I would say odd things are different things that I had while I was there was, you know, when you walk to a restaurant and there's like a fish tank, they literally went into the fish tank, dug a fish out, cut it up, put it down, and it was just like, eat. And it wasn't that bad. It was actually pretty good. I did it. I ate the fish out of the tank. Another thing, I, I think I ate turtle foot. Now, <laughs> I'm laughing because the person that I was with said that they didn't believe that it was like from an actual turtle. And this is a Japan native. And I was like, that looks like a foot to me. So I ate it, tasted a little weird. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It was just turtle foot in my opinion but i had that too but i will have to say the best thing that i ate over there was the ramen the ramen was absolutely amazing 
And the best ramen that I had was in a place uh, in Miyazaki. I don't know if I'll ever get to taste that again. And that worries me. Oh, and I also had McDonald's. Now, I don't usually eat McDonald's. I haven't had McDonald's in like a year and some change, but I was in Japan. I wanted to see if it tasted different and the fries pretty much tasted the same, but everything was fresh, everything was good. I liked it. So while traveling to different places in Japan, sometimes we had to sleep on the floor. We had to kind of put the bed together and I felt confident because the place we had stayed in the night before, they actually taught us how to do it, how you set it up, how you're not supposed to step on it. It was really cool to kind of immerse myself into the culture of like sleeping on this mat on the floor in Japan. And it's actually more comfortable than it looks in my opinion. So we also did stay in hotels sometimes. Sometimes we had to stay in hotels. And one thing I would say to prepare for is the rooms are a lot smaller than here in America. All right, so this is my room. I have not met my roommate yet. And I think you have to leave your key in here in order for the light to stay on. Because if I take it out, look what happens. Take my key out, wait for it. Now, nope. oopsie, there we go. So then you gotta put your key back in here. If I can see what I'm doing. And then they come on. So that's different. I also thought the beds were a little firmer and oh, the toilets. I love using the toilet in Japan. I'm serious. One of my favorite things to do in Japan was to use the toilet. Some of the toilets look like spaceships. I can't even front. This toilet looks like it's straight out of something from the future. <laughs> look at this toilet. This one got a control panel. Bro, I'm about to use you. So one of the things I was looking forward to on this trip is I was told that part of what I'd be doing on the trip was to make it to the island of Agoshima. And so usually to get to Agoshima, there's only like, I think two ways you can get there. We were gonna have to hop on a train. From the train, we were gonna take a plane. From the plane, we were gonna take a helicopter and the helicopter was gonna take us to the island. If you're not gonna use a helicopter, another way to get there is by taking a boat. So me and Gary, shout out to Pastor Gary, we had to get up at like, three o'clock in the morning, drove to the airport. It's dark outside, we're tired because the whole day we have been traveling and doing other things. But finally, we make it to the airport, we make it on time, then we have to take a plane to Hachijojima. I really hope that I'm saying that right. I'm, I'm trying my hardest. And our flight ended up getting delayed because the weather was bad, which is not a good sign that we are gonna be able to make it to this island. First thing that we do is we check in at the station to see if the helicopter will be able to take us. And they tell us, not at this time. So what we end up having to do is basically wait. And so we went to a volcano. Now, one thing about the guy Gary that I was with is he is a thrill seeker. He's someone who is very adventurous. And as the person who's supposed to film everything, I had to follow Gary. So Gary goes, let's hike this volcano in this horrible weather and it's gonna be a great time. <laughs> and it was rough. No, we're near the top. <laughs> so we're gonna do it on foot. <laughs> the majority of the elevation's on foot, not by car. So it's gonna be interesting. We're not even close to being halfway up and it's already a, it's already a rough workout, so. I would estimate that's a 45 degree angle. Yes. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> ah, here we go. The steepest thing that I've ever had to climb, I've, I've, I don't even know what to compare it to, and I'm not even sure the name of it because I'm kind of confused and when I Google it, different things come up. It's a volcano on Hachijojima and there's a sign that says Dash Fuji. So I guess it's like a little Mount Fuji, I don't know, but I think it's like three, over 3,000 elevation. And let me tell you, my booty was burning. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Like the glutes, the hamstrings, my calves, the shins, everything. Everything was hurt. But despite we did it, we did it in the rain, in the fog, in the crazy wind. I've never done anything like that. And it was absolutely incredible once we got up there. And so at the peak of this incredible feeling, then I realized we gotta get down. And even that was that was a little workout. It was so steep that sometimes I felt like I was about to topple over. So I just had to like stop for a second. I just want to say walking down a volcano is a lot easier than walking up. My hair looks crazy. So we make it back down. We're drenched. We're covered in dirt, water, and sweat. 
And long story short, we did not make it to the island, which I was really excited about, but we still made the best of it. Now, this is all gonna be a part of the documentary that I kind of helped shoot. So make sure you subscribe to Far Flung Tin Can. Follow them so that when the documentary drops, you can see it in full. And this story is just one story of many stories. I think there were 70 of us on the trip. So there's gonna be a lot of, a lot of just great things to hear about. Make sure you subscribe. We also got to visit downtown Tokyo, which was super cool. I did see one weird thing though. There was a guy who was allowing people to pay money to smack him in the butt with a bat and uh, they were doing it. It was weird. But other than that, the food was good. The people were good. The cherry blossoms were absolutely beautiful. And on the very last day, we went to Disney Tokyo, which I'm going to make a separate video about. So I'm not going to talk much about it, but all I got to say, Disney is actually Disney at Disney Tokyo. I'm just going to put it like that. Stay tuned for the video. It was awesome. So yeah, Japan was, was really cool. Um, I definitely want to go back. I would actually put it on a list of places that I could live. Going with Far Flung was absolutely incredible, incredible people. Um, it's an incredible movement. It's something that I would suggest anyone support. It's a Christian organization and we do go to do missions and we do go for a purpose greater than ourselves. If you are someone who is not a Christian, Far Flung still does a lot just to help communities in a lot of these places. I went to Brazil with them about five years ago and even seeing the impact that they had on people, bringing doctors with them to give people medical attention, putting together glasses for people who might need to see better, bringing toys and food and snacks for the kids. I'm telling you, Far Flung is an organization. I don't even want to refer to it as an organization. It's a collective of people who have a heart for other people who love people. So I would really suggest checking them out. I'm going to leave a link in the description to their website as well as their YouTube channel. So that's it. If you have any questions about Japan that maybe I could answer, let me know. And until then, it's your boy K-Soul. Arigato gozaimasu. Peace.